welcome to Good Who No! I'm your maker, Sparky of Sparky Can Do, and this is my partner in crime, Riri of Vixen Creation. That's me. We interrupt your program for one moment with this cute doggo, Ace. Ace is the whole fursuit we show you how to make in this Good to Know series. You'll get to see exactly how he was made from start to finish if you purchase this whole series for 75 New Zealand dollars on my website, www.sparkybites.com. And now, for a limited time only, he'll be up for auction on the Dealer's Den. Don't let this doggo escape. Pin him down and make Ace yours today. I mean, whenever the auction ends. Link in the description below. And if for some crazy reason we're all still alive after the auction ends, well, I guess you can still settle for buying the Good to Know series and trying your hand at making your very own fursuit. How's that for a sales pitch? Alrighty then, back to the episode for you. Enjoy! Today we'll be showing you how to make the perfect tail. It's the easiest part of a fursuit to make, so we thought we'd start here, then build our way up to the harder parts as we progress through the episodes. Sparky, I have a question. What's that, Riri? I don't think this is appropriate attire for us to wear. I think you're 100% correct. Hot damn! damn! Now we're professional and stylish. Let's get to work! All right. Now, with any new build, you're going to first and foremost need a reference sheet of said character. This is the best way to get an understanding of how your costume's colors and design will look together before getting too carried away and then deciding you hate it. Here's what our costume's reference sheet looks like. <laughs> Just kidding! There's way too many colors here and they clash badly. You want it to look something more like this. That's much better! The design flows together nicely and the colors match but also stand out without being psychotic. I mean, unless that's your thing. No comment. Yes, so let's not waste our time and money on supplies then backpedal. Oh, and this is Ace by the way. He's a wolf dog. Plain and simple, just yep, a wolf dog, yes. Nothing more, nothing less. The takeaway here is, don't skim out on your reference sheet. Heck, it's a really good idea to get a talented artist involved. Oh, you should check out Sweden Tree, she did our reference sheet. Oh, commission Sweden Tree, she has really cool drawings and shit. Even if you want to design it yourself, they can still give you helpful pointers. Support your local or not so local artist today. Supplies you'll need. Zip paper, markers, scissors, a pin cushion, some zippers, thin fabric, thick fabric, and of course all that luxurious fur you've been dying to use. And measuring tape! Tail patterns. They're pretty straightforward. You draw a 2D image of what you desire, and then cut two of them out and sew it together. We've got a bunny here, and then you make your pattern, and then add the little arrows showing which direction you want the fur to go. Whoop! So yeah, you can make it long and curvy like a cat, short and stubby like a bunny, or this one is going to be a natural wolf looking tail, so it's a bit more thicker and kind of hangs down. My boy Ace will have a classical looking cartoon wolfy dog tail thing. It's got a bit of curve to it with a flicky uppy bit for the tip. And don't forget arrows for the fur direction. Or if you're really adventurous, you can give your hand at a dragon's tail with spikes! Ah, but that's gonna take up a lot of time. So we're not gonna go there today. If you have a long tail but don't want it touching the floor, it's a good idea to measure from where your tail base will be on your lower back all the way to the floor, and then make sure there's about 15 centimeters of airspace. Go and grab yourself a big piece of paper to work on. My boy Ace, his tail is roughly gonna be 65 centimeters long. Ace's tail zippers onto the bodysuit. My zipper here is 40 centimeters long, which means I need to make the tail hole 20 centimeters. Get two tail holes and put them together and you got 40! Hey, quick math! Now that we have the shape, it's time to draw the design on for all the different colors. Draw arrows in the direction you want the fur to go and make sure to label each piece with what color it is. You also want to add marker lines every 15 to 20 centimeters. These will help later on when sewing everything together. Cut all the pieces out. Snippity snip snip. And you want to cut out the three different fur pattern lines as well. 
Yeah. I have two lengths of fur for Ace. One is a medium pile that I'll be using on most of the body, and the other is a long pile that I'll be using on the chest, back of head, shoulders, and tail. So the first one I'm gonna do is be marking which direction the fur is going in. Do, 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 do. This fur is going that way here, yeah. so you might wanna, maybe it might be easier if you turn it around. Check to make sure it's going the right way. This will help so you never get patterns facing the wrong way. It happens far too often, I swear. Lay the fur on a flat surface. I like the floor, but a table can work too. <laughs> and because we're trying to be slightly professional, we're using a table. And of course, adding in your little guidance markers along the way. You know, those special marker lines we were talking about before? You need them everywhere, especially if you're a beginner. Yeah. This side of the pattern I call X. So when I trace them out, I put a little X on each side. When I flip the pattern to draw on the other side, I don't put X's on them. So I end up with two piles, X side and non-X side. Remember, you want to give your patterns about one centimeter of seam allowance for sewing. Next part is cutting out the fur. Let me quickly demonstrate how this works on scrap fur. You want to slip the tip of the fabric scissors just under the knit of the fur. and do small snips so that you're cutting mostly just the knit and not the fur. Here's what it looks like when you do big cuts. Now you're left with an edge that has damaged fur and if you were to sew this together it would look very choppy. Some fursuit makers use a sharp craft knife to cut the fur fabric, as it takes the chance away more of cutting the fur, but I find it a bit too fiddly with holding the fur down, and I can do it just fine with scissors, so that's my preferred method. Now that all the pieces are cut out, let's arrange them back together so we can choose what parts we want to sew up first. Put the two sides in their X or non-X piles and puzzle them together. Oh, what a bitch! Oh, what a bitch! X, X, X. No X, no X, no X! It's easiest to sew up the patterns of the two sides first, then sew them together last. Whoa. We'll be using a sewing machine for sewing up all these pieces, because civilization, baby! You only need a basic one-line stitch. All sewing machines can do this. However, fur can be tricky for some machines. Mine's a big industrial one and can handle a fair amount of my nonsense. Feel free to pin the parts you're going to sew together, even if they're quite short like these pieces here. It still might be quite handy for you. And beginners, of course. Smaller pieces like these I can just sew up with my eye and make sure that they're going through the machine at the same rate. But for all noobs, I would highly suggest pinning things together. I find that with my machine, it pulls in the bottom fabric faster than the top, so I'm always making sure I force in the top fabric more while pulling on the bottom to keep them going in at the same rate. And of course, I double sew all my seams, so as soon as you get to the bottom, I normally just lift the foot up, turn the whole piece of fabric around and sew back down it. It's way easier sewing it the second time than the first time because you don't have to worry about shoving all the fur into the fabric seam. After fully sewing up the two halves, as you can see, so fluffy, you can now proceed to sewing them together. But first I'll mark out 20 centimeters on the underside of the tail, about five centimeters down. This is where I'm going to put my zipper for turning the tail inside out from, and stuffing once done. 
And again, check in constantly that your marker lines are matching up together because as soon as they start going wary, things go downhill very fast. If possible, always sew in the direction that the fur is going. When doing the tail, I start from the top and go to the tip, then stop and do it again for the other side. I find this the easiest way to sew, and the fur looks best when viewed from the other side. Gotta get that good tuck going. Tuck that fur in. Tuck it in. Deeper. Where were you zoomed up? Somewhere else. Someone's butt. See? Always matching up. That's exactly what you want. Chicka bam I don't overlock tail seams because you're never going to see them. Overlocking isn't done for strength, but purely aesthetic purposes. So it's all good! This is the 5cm part where I'm sewing just before the zipper starts. So it's just a quick up and down. So nice! With my machine, I can rotate the wheel manually to make the foot slowly eat the fur. It's handy when you're first starting off a run or going over big, lumpy seams. Because sometimes when you put your foot down, the machine just takes off on you. So if you can do it manually really slowly, that's very helpful. You especially want to be tucking the fur in very neatly towards the tip of the tail because that's what all the fur is literally facing against itself. You just have to force the fur back into itself and hope that you're not running over any. Woo! It looks like it's almost done, but it's not. You've still got a bit to go. So we'll just flip it inside out to give it a quick one over to make sure none of the fur got caught on the inside when you're sewing. If you did catch any of the fur while you were sewing, you can try and brush it out. Preventative care is definitely easier than trying to make a fixer upper afterwards. Oh, so nice. You feel so nice. Grab your 20 centimeter zip and turn on the hot glue gun because it's time to attach your very first zipper. I put a small amount of hot glue on the end of the zipper and glue it to the inside of the tail. Warning, warning, using dangerous elements. <laughs> please, please try not to burn yourself, but it's most likely gonna happen. <laughs> the goal here is to use a small amount of hot glue to hold the zipper in place so we can hand stitch it afterwards. When applying the hot glue, you only want to use a small amount down the middle, not too close to the zipper teeth or the edge of the fabric, as it will make it harder to hand sew down if there's glue in the way. And it won't zip up properly if it's too close to the teeth either. The slower you do this, the easier it is. I'd suggest applying 5 centimeters at a time and make sure to line the zipper teeth up by the edge of the fabric, never having the teeth going over the fabric. It's better to have it further back than too far forward. Don't worry about this marker line we're about to hot glue over. I put that in there before, forgetting that we were putting a zipper in here later. So we'll just go over the top, it's fine. Once you're done gluing, you can zip it up and trim the little flappy bits off. I find them just annoying, so I just get rid of them. And add a little bit more glue around the tips just so that the zipper doesn't come flying off. One weird thing that I've learned to do is lick the end of my finger and push down on the hot glue. This will make it dry faster. The hot glue doesn't stick to my skin, so I can pull my finger away easily without it burning me. If you leave your finger on it, of course it'll burn you, but I'm just dabbing it real quickly and pushing the glue where I want it to go. It's a bit weird, but it works! And I'm sure every fursuit maker out there does this too. <laughs> After gluing it down, I'm just checking to see what it looks like on the other side, and so far, it's looking pretty good. Once it's all glued in place, you can now hand sew the zipper down using a blanket stitch. You first thread the needle, pull it all the way through, then tie the end to the part sewn through. Twice.
Now poke the needle in, going through the zipper edge and just under the fur fabric, then back up again. Have it half sticking out, then wrap the thread around the needle and pull it all the way through. Do this part slowly and keep your eye on it as the thread can get a bit tangled. I use my back fingers to hold the thread while I'm sewing so it kind of keeps them untangled a bit. Each stitch should be a semi-tight knot. It's a great stitch for using on fursuits as it keeps everything tight. I like to do a double knot around every 10 centimeters to make it extra, extra secure. Make sure your stitches aren't too shallow or spread apart. You want them about half a centimeter deep and that same amount between each stitch too. Good luck, my dudes! I don't know why we call it the tail portal. It just got called that once and now we continuously call it that. It's essentially just the covering that we put on the tail to stop the polyfill from coming out and it makes it look all clean and tidy. Grab your 40 centimeter zipper that we were talking about before. This is the open-ended one. Unzip the zip completely. We're going to be using one half on the tail and the other half will be attached to the bodysuit later on. I like to use the part that has the zipper on it for the tail, but it doesn't really matter which side you use. Just like the last zipper, we're going to put a small bead of hot glue down the middle of the zip, not getting it too close to the teeth or the other side of the zipper, because we will have to hand sew this in as well. Zippers that go around like this, that have a beginning and end, I actually make the beginning and end slightly lower down, so that when you zip it up, it's got a little bit more fur for the zipper to hide behind. I always start by gluing down the beginning first. I do about five centimeters and then stop. I then go and glue the end for about five centimeters as well, just to get the beginning and end sorted out. Then I look for where the middle is and glue down the middle. This just makes sure you have enough fur and zipper matching up together, otherwise you might get too much fur fabric and then not enough zipper, or too much zipper fabric and not enough fur. So you want to minimize that by doing this. I forgot to do this part as well, but I like to add a tiny amount of hot glue just next to where the seams are of the tail. Put a tiny bit of glue over the seams and just push it down with my finger. Of course I lick my finger first so that the glue doesn't stick. You know that trick that I was talking about before? It's very handy for all these things. I then glue the middle of these two sides down as well. If you do get to a spot where the fur is bunching up and there doesn't seem like there's enough zipper for fur or fur for zipper, you can make the fur shrink down a little bit smaller or stretch out a bit wider for making it fit the zipper. You do want to get the zipper measurement pretty accurate to the tail hole though. Fixing up afterwards always takes longer than preventative care. If there's too much fur overhanging, you can always clean up the edges afterwards. Next up, you want to grab your thick fabric. This thicker fabric is what we're going to cut a circle out of and use as the covering. You already know that the zipper length is 40 centimeters. Hold it over the fabric and then use a marker to quickly outline that circle. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you know, as, as accurate as you can get it. This tail portal is also where we attach the two nylon webbings where you slip your belt through for the tail loops. A beautiful. Then cut it out. Snip snip. Snip snip. Get your nylon webbing out and cut two pieces that are about eight centimeters long. These are gonna be your belt loops. Burning. 
Now I'm webbing frays a bit once you cut it, so you want to make sure to cauterize the end with a blowtorch or lighter. Did somebody say danger? Again, I lick my finger and pat down the edges to make them smoother. Place them on the circle covering to make sure they fit nicely. And they do! Yay! We're gonna be sewing them down here and here. I sew right on the edge, and then about a centimeter down, and then a crisscross in the middle. Sewing just one line across doesn't hold them down as well and they may come off. That's why I like to use this type of a sewing pattern. I sew over them a couple of times to really make sure they're sewed on there well. These babies ain't coming off! Now for the tricky part. We're going to be hand sewing the fabric to the tail, but also going through the zipper at the same time. So here's how that looks. You grab your needle, you stick it through the fabric, you stick it into the fur knit, and then go through the zipper all at the same time. This will definitely take longer than normal sewing. It's still faster doing it this way than sewing the zipper on once and then having to do it again for the tail portal. Use the stitch to go right around the entire tail portal, making sure to match up in the middle. Sometime later and you got this! Beautiful! Congratulations! Your tail is now done! You can stuff it full of polyfill! Ta-da! Unless you want to make a tail pillow with all the stuffing in it so it's all neat and tidy. This is where I use the thin black fabric. I used the same tail pattern that I cut out before, I just pieced it back together and taped it up. When drawing out this pattern, I give it 3 centimeters of excess. And because I'm lazy and don't want to trace out the pattern a second time, I fold the fabric over top of itself and cut the entire thing out. That way I end up with two same patterns of the same fabric. It's like cheating, but like the good kind. Once all trimmed out, you can sew it together making sure to leave a 20 centimeter hole for turning it inside out and stuffing it up. Then proceed to, hey, turn it inside out. And then stuff it up, woohoo! Fill until it's cozy to sleep on. And then sew up that 20 centimeter gap. Now here comes the fun part. I didn't realize how hard it would be to stuff a tail pillow inside of the tail. And even though I used the 20 centimeter zip, turns out if you maybe made it 30 or 40 centimeters, that, that would be way more ideal. So I had to shove this tail <laughs> through a 20 centimeter hole. It was a little bit tricky. It took me about, what, five minutes or so? I got there in the end. Call it a good workout. This is completely optional. It just looks neat and tidy keeping all the polyfill inside of a nice pillow. It also means you can take it in and out of the tail a lot easier. Zip! Meow. 
so soft uh -huh. and curly. Mm -hmm.